So, I needed to build a custom frame for my Home Assistant touchscreen kiosk that I made in previous videos. I don't have a fancy 3D printer, so I decided to use some recycled plywood. Let's see how to manufacture something decent with just some basic tools. So this is the concept I was thinking about. The idea was to create something like a column stand for this touchscreen and have an integrated active sound system in it. Because I want to use this device also as a media player for music and voice notifications from Home Assistant. But mainly I had to do this because this original frame is just not suitable for any kind of proper use anywhere. It has connectors sticking out and a raspberry is just hanging from the back along with wires. Not very practical. So I made new mounting holes for the raspberry and moved it slightly to hide that one connector that was sticking out from the top. Next I traced the outline of this whole thing on paper and took some measurements to pinpoint the actual position of the display area. After that I measured equal distance around the display area and got the overall size of the new frame. This template looks crooked and offset because I want to have the actual display area centered in the new frame. And as you can see it's not actually in the center of this original assembly. Also these connectors that I can't move anywhere add some additional challenges to the overall geometry. So this is the smallest size I was able to get this design to and still have the actual display in the center. I decided to use a slab of thick plywood to make the main body of this frame. I had this nice piece of quality plywood just laying around and getting moldy. This stuff is very thick, it's perfect. I will glue two layers of this in a sandwich. If you can't find anything of that thickness, just double up and use four or five layers of plywood. It's really the same job, just a little bit more work. So I traced the inside outline and cut the center out with a regular jigsaw. That took forever because I was using a small tooth blade to have a cleaner result. The touch screen will go in like this and I will manufacture a separate face plate to cover everything around the actual display area. Next I glued both layers together with some regular installation glue I had laying around. And of course it did not line up perfectly so I had to sand down sides quite a bit. But that's okay, I did take that into account when designing the overall size. So now it was time to make the face plate. The material for that needed to be very thin and strong because I needed to make a bevel on the inside edges. You know, so it would be possible to touch something that is very close to the edge of the screen. Unfortunately, I can't use regular thin plywood for this job. It breaks very easily along the edges if you try to do something with them, like a bevel. So I chose to use this material. This is aluminum plastic aluminum. I don't know what it's called, sorry. But it's just awesome. It is used to make outdoor advertisement signs. I use it a lot in my projects around the house. You can find something like this in a dumpster behind your local outdoor advertising agency. You can also use a plate of aluminum if you have that, that also would be perfect. So I took some measurements and traced the display area. And I cut that out, again, just with a jigsaw. The key to having a straight line while doing this freehand is having a very sharp pencil for marking your line. This way you will have a very precise line to follow. I made the bevel with just a hand file and finished up with sanding paper. And it came out pretty decent. So now it was time to glue the faceplate. For that I used contact glue. You know, that stuff that you smear on the surface and let it dry for 20 minutes, then press pieces together. That stuff is slightly flexible, so it will hold okay if this plywood starts changing size because of humidity in the air. It should not, but you never know. And this is what I got. It looks kind of bulky, so let's make it look nicer by rounding the edges. I don't have a fancy belt sander, so I'm using a grinder with a flap wheel. The key here is to adjust the speed to the minimum, otherwise you're gonna just burn the wood. So first I made a rough pass, making a big bevel all around the edges. Then I followed that with a lot of sanding. That took forever and I think I'm going to continue that a little bit more. But here is the result right now. Pretty nice, I was actually kinda surprised how nice this turned out. And think about it, this is made from trash materials and with very basic tools that most of us have laying around the house. So now I can attach a bracket to this frame. For example, something simple like this. And mount this whole thing on top of my speaker column. 
later when I get to that. Now I'm not gonna make a backplate for this touchscreen frame. I thought about that and it just seems to be completely unnecessary. There are many reasons for that and one of them is that I need to have easy access to the USB connectors of the Raspberry. Sometimes I need to hook up a keyboard to it. So having a backplate would require actually putting three different connectors back there. Audio, power, and USB. And that is just too much hassle for practically no advantage. For holding this screen assembly inside the frame, I'm gonna just use small tabs of hot glue. Because creating some mechanical way of fastening that just seems like an overkill. And there is a chance of over tightening and damaging that fragile display. Anyways, I need to paint this, but I'm going to do it along with the rest of this project. Next, I will start building speakers from stuff I found in a dumpster. That's gonna be exciting, cause I'm kinda picky about sound quality. So, subscribe to my channel to see my next video about this project. And check out my previous videos about this in the description. Please, like this video. Thanks for watching.